Well, thank you and good afternoon. And um, after Lay's first introduction and Kadat's sort of speech, I'm not sure I need to say much more actually. I think you, you covered the territory. But no, seriously, first let me say that it's an honor to be putting on Making Features here in the Philippines. And I want to thank the British Council for recognizing the potential of Making Features <clears throat> and for working in partnership with us to create the important and I think inspiring program we've got lined up for this Cebu event. Let me also say, also say something briefly about Plymouth College of Arts in the UK, for whom I've developed Making Futures as a long-term research project, starting with the first edition in 2009 and curating it through six biennial UK editions to date. Plymouth College of Art is unique because of its vision for the class, which Making Futures both defines and articulates on behalf of the college. So, for example, whereas many UK art schools have dramatically reduced or even closed their craft programs and expensive workshop facilities, the college has gone completely in the opposite direction and invested literally millions of pounds sterling in new state-of-the-art craft workshops and studios alongside a large digital fab lab facility. So, let's turn to making futures itself now and the ideas that motivate and underpin it. And put briefly, as well as celebrating makers as individual creative agents, it's about exploring the progressive social possibilities presented by the revival, development, and promotion of craft in its many forms and guises in societies across the world. And this referencing of craft in its many forms and guises is important because Making Futures conceives craft in the broadest possible terms, as the subject includes traditional indigenous craft, contemporary craft, art and craft, artisanal production, or neo-artisanal production, if you like, designed to make, and even digitally inclined making movements. And I, of course, I realize that this elastic use of the term craft might be controversial. But the point is, and this is true, in Making Futures, we come together as equally respected parts of a relational field, one in which we seek out what's common rather than what separates us, sharing our experiences and learning from one another and reflecting on the kind of viable future we want to make for ourselves. And in referring to making a more viable future, I'm obviously pointing to the fact that we are in a terrible, terrible bind. Globalization has brought us cheap goods that have enormous environmental and social costs. We all know this, along with huge imbalances in wealth creation. Indeed, we know that the system is pushing us towards catastrophic environmental and social breakdown. These are no exaggerations. Faced with this emergency, Making Futures proposes that industrial modernity has reached a turning point one in which a craft return becomes not just possible, but necessary, and that its expanded notion of craft, i.e. that relational field that I spoke about, be put to work as part of a broader and more radical future-facing project, one in which makers are seen as agents of progressive social change through the expansion of small-scale, locally embedded, but globally aware, creative enterprises which can, and indeed do, as we will see, profoundly enrich our societies, not just in terms of economic regeneration, but by helping to construct resilient, self-aware communities capable of embracing both social and environmental justices, which, when networked into wider ecologies of making, can together see a more sustainable future. Our title for this edition of Making Futures, Rethinking Craft Communities, Taking, Taking on Global Challenges, expresses this important and ambitious agenda by taking four overlapping global challenges facing craft communities, which we've then built into the conference program that you'll see as seven thematic sessions. So let me briefly just show how the four challenges map to the seven sessions. First, obviously the need to address the climate emergency and to transition to environmentally sustainable, low carbon methods of production and consumption. These challenges are explored in the two thematic sessions, life cycles of material worlds 
and in the workshops, materials and processes and transformation. Secondly, the need to explore the changing nature of both craft and industry through, for example, the impact of relatively cheap, small-scale digital production tools and communications technologies, and particularly to examine the positives and indeed negatives associated with the integration of these tools into craft and maker-based workflows. These challenges are explored in the thematic sessions Crafting in Industry and Digital Analog Crafting. Thirdly, the need to address the marginalisation of many craft communities and to develop forms of regeneration that are socially inclusive and seek to address inequalities based on gender, class, race and indeed the legacies of colonialism and the need to then propagate successful craft community initiatives and network, network them into wider, more self-confident and exemplary ecologies of making. And these challenges are explored in the two thematic sessions, Craft as Social Enterprise and Building Craft Networks and Partnerships in Action. And finally, but not least, the need to develop and support craft leaders or systems of leadership capable of addressing the above challenges for the benefit of craft communities. And this challenge is explored in the thematic session, Making Leaders, Crafting Leadership Cultures. And I think that's probably, if I've got this right, my five minutes spam on the door. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Martha.